Rashomon, directed by Akira Kurosawa, is considered one of the greatest films ever made. What is so great about Rashomon? Let me show you in this video. I grade a film on four criteria. These are technical artistry, storytelling artistry, entertainment, and art. A film must ace all four to be great. If you want to know what makes a great film, I'll link to it below. Rashomon was a breath of fresh air to world cinema. Before it, not many film snobs respected films from Asia. Rashomon showed what directors beyond Hollywood and Europe could achieve that you could tell a story in a different way. There were many innovations in Rashomon. The most popular and probably the least important is that it is widely regarded as the first film in which the camera was pointed at the sun. It's not an exposure challenge because anyone with a camera can expose the sun. Photochemical film was extremely combustible and old film still is. You could ruin your film and your health so it was rarely attempted. Kurosawa had many films as director under his belt, so he knew he could experiment a bit and burn a few cameras without getting fired. Lighting-wise, the dapple lighting that's so consistent across Rashomon is extremely hard to achieve. Cinematographer Kazuo Miyagawa used large mirrors to reflect sunlight because nothing else could provide that much light for the lens aperture they were working with. There were no HMIs in those days, and Rashomon was mostly shot in a real forest for budgetary reasons. The studio financed this crazy experiment because his earlier films were hits, but they weren't that suicidal with their money. The amount of effort that went into positioning and repositioning those mirrors with the wind blowing through the forest is well documented. That's the kind of director Kurosawa was, a perfectionist. The dapple light brings a magical feel to the entire forest as if the characters are deep in its clutches and can't escape. The forest is all around them like a dream, and this feeling can't be shaken off. Contrast that to the courtyard scenes in open daylight with the sky clear and visible. This is where the truth might be revealed. What truth? I'll talk about that a bit later. Kurosawa and Miyagawa employed deep focus in Rashomon. Most everything in the frame is in focus. Later in his career, Kurosawa moved towards telephoto lenses but for most of Rashomon, it was a standard set of focal lens you'd have found in most films. I've explained this in greater detail in my video on the lenses Akira Kurosawa used. You'll find it in Wolf Crow Lifetime Access, I'll link to it below. The next big innovation was rain. Kurosawa drained all the water they had ordered in testing alone, so they had to get water from a nearby reservoir. They mixed black paint with the water so you could see the raindrops on camera, otherwise the drops wouldn't really be visible. Using large black droplets sells the effect of a terrible downpour as if you're witnessing the real thing. It starts off Rashomon with a bang and you know you're watching something special. Wind and rain were Kurosawa's staples. He uses them not just for effect but also as a storytelling device. For example, the bandit blames the breeze for what he did later that day. The production design was sparse but important. The broken gate, named Rashomon, was an extant gate at the time that was referenced and reconstructed for the film. It was built during the Heian period and fell into ruin in the 12th century, which is the period the film is set in. Kurosawa could have really used any era for this story, but he deliberately sets it in a period of turmoil and chaos, where man has to be constantly on guard against his fellow men. You can't trust anybody, and that is the very core of Rashomon. Rashomon is a story of rape and murder. There are four witnesses, a woodcutter, a samurai, his wife, and a bandit. Now here's a problem. Their stories don't match. The murderer changes identity depending on whose story we're watching. This phenomenon is something police officers face daily in a crime scene with witnesses. It's hard for people to agree on the details, even the most obvious ones. Today the name for this problem is the Rashomon effect, the unreliability of witnesses. Rashomon is structured as a murder mystery. I got a bit cheeky a few years ago and found a solution to the mystery. I made a video about it and also explained the importance of Rashomon as a work of art. You'll find it in Wolf Crow Lifetime Access. Back to the story. Whom do we believe? Every story is plausible because all we can do is depend on the accounts of each eyewitness. This means the actors playing those roles must be terrific, and they are. Toshiro Mifune is at his best here. He had to add layers and slight changes to his character depending on whose point of view is being told. To many, he was the standout. To me though, I was mesmerized most by the work of Machiko Kyo. Not only does she stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Mifune, I believe she outclasses him. 
Editing is another incredible draw in Rashomon. Each story finds a different rhythm in the edit. What I'll highlight here is pure Kurosawa. Early in the film he tricks the viewer into a trance-like state as Takashi Shimura, playing the woodcutter, walks into the forest. Without actually realizing it, we slip into a maze, and at the end of it we don't remember how he got there. All meticulously planned and executed, including this long tracking shot. The payoff comes later in another scene where the wife holds a knife and is in a trance of her own as she sways to and fro from side to side. It's an incredible scene because once your attention is drawn to it, you can never unsee it. On first viewing, and I was lucky enough to watch Rashomon on the large screen, I was totally into it. I didn't know one could use pure cinema to tell stories in powerful ways, and the scene in Rashomon is the amalgamation of all things great about pure cinema. Cinematography, acting, music, and editing. No dialogue. There are many other examples. I'll just talk about one more that younger audiences might recognize. The Mexican standoff, or any gunfight ever, is a core construct in Rashomon. It is displayed in many forms. Almost always there's anticipation and suspense, and it is all created by just cutting on the look. A popular editing concept Godard spoke about. Rashomon is a thoroughly entertaining film. The murder mystery and fast pacing is great fun even today. A lot of people will be surprised to learn the average shot length in Rashomon is shorter than the average at the time. It's closer to how films are paced today. It's rewatchable not only for its finer points, but also as a mystery you'll be itching to solve. It did well in Japan on release and made money for the studio, so the experiment paid off. It also established Kurosawa as a director to watch, and it propelled his career to heights no other director has matched, artistically speaking of course. Which brings us to the question, is Rashomon art? Kurosawa borrowed from two short stories to write Rashomon, but this union of sound and image won't be found in any book. When Kurosawa first presented his assistants with the script of Rashomon, they had no clue what it meant. Very few people thought it was going to turn out good, let alone great. They didn't understand that words just tell a story, the director brings it to life. That's the hand of the artist. Like many of Kurosawa's films, Rashomon is the perfect marriage of entertainment and art, which is why it is one of the greatest films ever made, and is fourth on my list of 100 films to see before you die. I'll link to it below. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell on the right. I'll see you in the next one. Bye now.